Thanks for arranging this and thanks for coming. Um, I'm going to introduce you to the STORM project, which is a European Union Horizon 2020 funded research project um, looking at protecting cultural heritage from climate change and natural disasters. I'm going to focus on the climate change aspect and from a UK perspective. Uh, so it's a huge project, 20 partners ranging from large industry to small businesses, uh, a few academic partners and of course the heart of it is five pilot sites. So we have the Bass of Diocletian in Rome, uh, Roman, the Roman ruins of Troy in Portugal, Ephesus in Turkey, Rithymno in Greece and in the UK we have a small heritage project in Mella which is close to Manchester. The aims of the project are to bring together uh, useful information and tools and services to help uh, management of cultural heritage assets protect their assets from climate change and natural disasters. And it hopes to help them prevent the hazard, the damage from occurring in the first place, intervene when the hazard take pl takes place, and to suggest new policies, planning, and processes for government organisations and cultural heritage site managers. And a key part of this is to integrate novel and inexpensive monitoring tools and you'll see in a minute how we've integrated some weather stations etc at our site. So if we go on to Mella, it's, as I said it's in the northwest of England close to Manchester and it's, significant, it's different from the other sites in that we have three individual sites all located at different elevations, different, different um, almost giving it different microclimates. So we have something called the Old Vicarage site, which has Bronze Age, Iron Age, and Roman hilltop settlement. And we have Shaw Cairn, which is a Bronze Age burial site. And we have Mellor Mill, which is very different. It's an industrial period mill that was burnt down in 1890s. So what we've done is we've created some use cases, which is parts of the site that we are interested in monitoring and protecting. Uh, in terms of the old vicarage site, we have two use cases. We have the Iron Age ditch, which has been exposed on your right-hand site there, uh, and that's been left open for the public to view, and is now a threat to weather events, as I'll show you in a minute. And we also have a... We also have a reconstructed roundhouse that was built in the 2000s as part of, as part of another European project. At the mill site, we have the entire foundations of the mill which have been excavated and recently uh, landscaped to allow people to visit. And here we're focusing on the Wellington wheel pit, which is here, and the steam engine beds, which are here. And then we have the Bronze Age burial at Shaw Cairn, which is on top of a, a hilltop. And then attached to that, we have some scenarios. So. What I, I won't go into them all in detail, what we're concerned with uh, from the start of the project was prolonged periods of low temperature and how th freeze thaw action would affect the masonry at the mill site. And we're also really concerned about flooding from heavy precipitation events into the future. Uh, this isn't to insult your intelligence, I'm sure you all know the difference between weather and climate, but I put this in because it was very difficult to um, explain this to pilot site Oh, uh, to cultural heritage asset owners and also to the technical partners within the project. Another thing that was difficult to get across was that climate change wasn't only looking at temperature, we were concerned with things like precipitation, especially the frequency and the magnitude and how that might affect flooding into the future. So from those, from these scenarios, we selected some climate indices and we did this with ZAMG, which is, I'm not sure on the German name, but it's the Austrian Weather Service. And they took our scenarios and created some climate indices. And the one I'll focus on here is freeze thaw, which is the bottom there. So we said we were concerned that freeze thaw may increase as a result of climate change, thinking that the extremes of both ends of the spectrum would be worse. So we thought it'd be warmer and colder. Um, and we define that as the number of days for which temp minimum temperature is minus 2.2 and the maximum temperature is zero. So what they did is they got the data from the Met Office um, for the Manchester Airport region uh, from 71 to 2000 and used that as our baseline. And they run a climate model simulation on the historic data to confirm it was correct and then they ran it into the future for the period, the middle of this century. 
And they asked me to include this because it's important to get across to the site managers that it's just a projection and not a prediction. So this model was then downscaled to uh, focus on the northwest of England and we used multiple models and used the average of the results. And the projections are based on RCP 8.5, which is obviously, I'm sure you know, is the worst case scenario. So looking at the baseline data, um, in the U in northwest UK around Manchester, uh, the average summer temperature is 16 degrees. The average winter temperature is 5 degrees. Summer days, which were defined as days in which temperature was greater than 25 degrees Celsius, there was 8.6. Freeze thaw days, which uh, temp days in which temp minimum temperature is minus 2.2 and maximum is zero, there were 14.5 days. And consecutive frost days, there were 8.6 again. Uh, really quickly, just looking at the data then. So, in, uh, as expected, we, ex we think temperatures will rise by about 1.5 degrees C. And that's, not, that's nothing, nothing special, kind of expected. But this was what surprised us for the Manchester pilot site, is we we're expecting freeze thaw days to be significantly worse into the future. But actually, we're going to have a huge reduction in 50% of the freeze thaw days. Uh, for the northwest of England, which means that the mill site uh, into the future might actually be easier to manage. Uh, some, this is included because summer days are due to increase by 65%, but the important thing to remember is that we're, in Manchester, in the northwest of England, we only have about 8.6 days per year, summer days. So a 65% increase in 8.6 days isn't that much. In terms of the precipitation results then, uh, the total rainfall, annual rainfall is 800 millimetres. Um, wet days per month, we have between 10 and 14. And heavy rain days, which are days in which rainfall is greater than 10 millimetres, there was 20. And very heavy rain days, there were three. That's rainfall greater than 20 millimetres. The longest wet period in the baseline was 16 days, and the longest dry period was 30 days. We couldn't um, say for sure whether precipitation would increase into the future. There was no signal in the model. But what we could say is there'll be a 10% increase in heavy precipitation days. Into the future then, we, at the minute we're monitoring the sites with some inexpensive weather equipment, as that's part of the project's aim, is to make sure that small scale sites can afford to do this. So we've got three Davis Vantage Pro 2 weather stations installed at the sites, and they will be left running into the future with, in uh, collaboration with Salford University. We also have some environmental sensor networks set up which give us temperature data in and around the archaeology at the Vicarage site, and we will monitor weather events using laser scanning and photogrammetry to monitor the assets. What the what we want to get across today then is that there'll be an increase in precipitation days, heavy precipitation days in northwest England, and that's a real concern for flooding. Uh, not so much as bad is that there is no clear signal in precipitation amounts, so we can't say for sure. And although it's a 65% increase in summer days, this is from a very low base, so actually it won't be that, it's not that bad, so to speak. And what will be good for our site and for the northwest of England potentially is a 50% reduction in freeze thaw days. Now I've put this in because I don't want to sound all Donald Trump saying it's not too bad, um, but what we've only taken into account four or five climate indices here, and there's many things that we haven't taken into account. And for example, this summer, which was very warm in northwest Europe, as I'm sure you all know. There was very close to our site, there was a, a moorland fire. And this is an example, wildfires are something that in England we didn't bother to even address. We have in the other pilot sites, but not in England. So again, what, we, what we've done is we've provided these results and it's up to site management, site management and policy makers to take these results and to plan long-term measures to protect their cultural heritage assets. Um, and like I say, remember that only a select number of indices were used in this analysis. So 
it's not that wide ranging and more thorough analysis will be needed into the future. <coughs> <That's me. laughs> Thank you.